Yeah, so we feed them like beef and chicken. Yeah. So that's it. Preparing food for tomorrow. And make sure all the dogs are happy. You don't just feed them kibble, eh? Ah, uh, no, that's not enough. Not enough, like, uh, not enough energy. Yet. No, like so dogs are like high energy dogs. Yeah. And because of uh, because also they sleep outside in the winter, they burn a lot of calories just living outside. Yeah. So yeah, so that's why they need lots of protein, lots of fats, and in the kibble they got like all the minerals mm -hmm. and little stuff that they cannot. Um, that they cannot gain in meat, so so we complete it with kibbles and we mix it with water. So it's like those little athletes, they run, they eat snow, mm -hmm. but they don't they don't have enough water to like sustain their body when they do like that high um, intense activity. Mm -hmm. So that's why we mix so we mix meat, kibbles and water together. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Each musher got their own recipe. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. prefer fish. Some, yeah. Yeah. So it depends, but it's mostly this: water, kibble, and meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little stew, right? And uh, it looks like the ravens get uh, a little little scraps here and there well, too. It's their cleaning staff. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're the cleanup crew. Yeah, yeah, the cleanup crew. They're always there, hanging around. Do they're the very... dogs get along with them, or do the dogs try to chase them off when they try to uh, get food? I think the raven wins. <laughs> <laughs> it just wins. They're they're super smart, and so the dogs they gave up, and so they kind of live together, ish. Yeah. As you can see. <laughs> right. Right. Like, uh, yeah. on this guy. It just reminds me of Willie's yeah. compliment a little bit. Look. You're friendly, aren't you? You're a friendly one. Hmm? Hi. A handful. Hi, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> this is, what kind of dog is this? So You're small. Really You're too small. Huh? You're not a sled. You're not a husky. Come here. You're pretty cute though. Good morning, another beautiful day in the Yukon. It is about 10 a.m. and I am at the dog kennel at Sky High Wilderness. I was just talking to Christine, who's hacking up and preparing a bunch of food uh, to feed this uh, large uh, kennel of sled dogs. And Tori and I are gonna go for a rip today um, on a dog team and we're super excited about that. So that should be taking place pretty soon. I'm gonna have to get all the dogs, um, you know, into their harnesses, get them all set up and ready to go. 
and uh, should be a really fun trip. Um, I've never actually driven a full dog team. You've probably seen some of my other adventures when I walked across uh, Ungava Peninsula, the northern Ungava Peninsula in the Arctic for uh, uh, 36 days or my 18 day Baffin Island trek and that was me and my dog but I was pulling a sled and he was pulling a sled. Well this one I have a whole bunch of dogs and they're pulling me on a sleigh. So this should be much more interesting. So a bit of a learning curve but uh, it should be a lot of fun. You sold them a couple of years ago. So each dog gets their own bucket or you just see? Oh uh, no, it's just put in bucket and in the morning we just like uh, feed like yeah. from a house to another one. Okay. So we kind of we have this kind of system so it's like efficient kind of. Yeah, full time job doing this though. Hey, there's so many dogs. How many dogs uh, you have here? Uh, more than a hundred. A uh, hundred. Yeah. So you could run a whole bunch of trips at once then. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do for water in the winter? Do they just eat snow? Uh no, so uh so this is water from the the creek. There's a creek never freeze. Yeah, oh, okay. Down that road. There. Yeah, yeah. I don't I know if you've been. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so this one. So yeah. we pump the water. Ah, okay. Yeah, I really do that. You pump the water out of the creek, mm -hmm. drove it here and then fill it up. Mm -hmm. And then, so this is like our warm water. And that keeps it, oh look at that, what yeah. a great setup. Yeah, so this is our war warm water, so it's always heated. And then, yeah, so then after, I just fill it, fill those buckets. And then so they get their kind of food and water together. Uh, yeah, food yeah. and water. And like then they this. can eat snow though too, right? Yeah, like this one is like done, right? Yeah. But, yeah, but it's kind of important that you got water, right? Yeah. It's like a little bit like you, if you do a strenuous activity and you don't drink enough, yeah. you have a headache, yeah. maybe you have tendinitis. We can't eat, uh, so this eat snow the same way huskies can. This is our old classroom, I see. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so when you do your team, you just make sure that uh, you need to have like, good leaders, yes? But you need also to make sure that you kind of have like a, a gel in your team. Yeah. So if dogs like like they need to cooperate together yeah. to know each other, uh, you cannot put like two troublemakers together. A little right. bit like in the classroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you put two troublemakers next to each other, you yeah. cannot teach. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the same thing. Two troublemakers next to each other, you cannot mush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. So yeah. And then after it depends like who's the fastest, who's the more powerful. Yeah. So. So let's say when you got a, a puppy litter, or you try to find a, you try to find like a theme, okay. so you can remember like I see the seven who belongs. That's it. So we got the seven. Dopey. Yeah, we got the seven dwarf family. Bashful. Yeah. We, yeah, that makes sense. And we got the uh, Charlotte Swim. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Wilbur, Charlotte, Templeton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that like must a, be so fun to. Yeah. Have yeah. You know, they have a lot of dogs here and they keep them, but they have large fenced in areas so she can take them. So she'll let a certain amount at a time go into that large fence in area and just run around off leash. Um, so obviously these dogs get to run a lot on a sled. And then when they're not running on a sled, they are, you know, chained and they have their dog house and they have a fair amount of room to roam around. But in addition to that, just to give them a better life, make them happier, they do time, they have that place where they can all run around together and she'll take them individually when she has time for off-leash walks as well. So um, that's pretty good. So it's, it, these dogs are definitely well uh, taken care of and they're outdoor dogs and they definitely don't mind the cold. So anyway, it's pretty cool to see how this kennel is run. A little short for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, most pro most professional dog mushers. They're like wiry, slimmer, strong, wiry guys, but not, not guys my build or my size for sure. They're definitely the ones that do well over the miles. A few less pounds to pull equals a few miles ahead, you know, in a race. And then here's the ice claw that just like throw into the snow to like anchor it. So you push this down. And the more you let this up, the faster you go. Is that one working? Have you harnessed it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the dogs that we're going to run, they get them uh, from their tethers and then they put them in a line uh, alongside where they're going to be harnessed up and they harness them all up and then they attach them to the dog sled. So right now they're ready to go. The next step is just attaching them to the dog sled itself and then we're off. Okay, men and women, look alive. So this guy, know. good boy, it's okay, it's okay. That guy's a little skittish. I'm just joking. Uh, yeah, he's, a, uh, so he's one of the youngest dogs we have here. Yeah. Look at this uh, guy's a greyhound. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we're gonna, I'm, I'm controlling the speed. Okay. So, if you're catching up to me, it means you're going too fast. Okay. So, you want to run a dog team, uh, especially distance dogs, this, just like when you drive your car on the highway on cruise control. You don't want to go fast and slow, fast and slow, because that drives them crazy. It drives okay. me crazy too. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so you keep your foot. So, when we start here, we're going to start with our foot on the brake. And one foot on the ski, one foot on the brake. And you'll be either. So, yeah, you'll either be hard. You want to keep up to me. So, okay. you see the marks in the snow? Yeah. That's team from yesterday pushing their foot on the brake. Okay. You're keeping up to me. And then once we get on, like let's say about 10, 15 minutes into yeah. the run, yeah. the dogs all calm down. And then you can go and try your mat. Okay. So the mat is kind of like the cruise control brake. Okay. It's more comfortable, it's more consistent to keep the speed. Okay. So, um, but so this... I, I wanna, I'm basically always gonna be using the brake or the mat. The, the brake or the mat, I'm never gonna be completely off. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I've been dog sledding for 20 years, so I know to, to take a curve, you speed up and you push on the, the foot on the brake at the perfect time that makes your sled swing. But it's like I said, I've been doing this for 20 years, it's easy for me to do it. Mm -hmm. But for beginners, I just say take the curve slow. So if you hit a tree or if you end up falling, doesn't hurt too bad. Uh, yeah, and rule number one never let go. When you put the snow on the put on the brake, yeah. line tight. So right now it's hard. When the dogs are hooked up, this line's gonna be tight. Yeah. Okay? There, and then in the snow. So when you have an anchor in, you don't assume that it's gonna hold your team for a long time or for like five seconds. So if you put the snow anchor in and then you step away from your sled because you want to do something, that hook can pop. Okay. Dogs don't understand waiting because you got to go over there because you dropped a mitt or something. Right. So you can put a snow anchor in and then you can go fix a dog or something if it's tangled. But you don't just like, it's not a parking brake. No, no. Okay. No. All right. And then, yeah, to pull it out, sometimes they get stuck. Okay. So they get, they get wedged in the uh, um, packed snow. So just you just need to give a little kick in there. And then you're ready to go. Ready to rock and roll. Okay. okay. Alrighty. So yeah, remember we're I'm controlling the speed. Okay. So oh uh, yeah, I have to wear this because I bubble. Okay. Bubble. Yeah, this time of the year I bubble in the sun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is my team. We have our smaller style, more sport, fast, Alaskan style basket sleds here. Um, so it's not a good idea for Tori and Wesley to ride in it and for us all to go on one sled. Um, just because they are a little tippier, they're nimble, but also because if a sled does tip, we're going to be going on some tight trails. If a sled does tip, the dogs might still run and it just, you know, um, it might, uh, somebody could potentially get hurt. So what we're gonna do is, um, Tori and Wesley are gonna follow on a snowmobile and uh, then me and Tori are gonna swap off and take turns riding the dog's team, so, uh, with the dog team. So that should be perfect. Uh, Jim, um, yeah, so your leaders are fire and circle. So you see there's the red rope, the red uh, neckline. So okay. That's connecting your leaders. And then grab the
Nein, like the send off. I got my toe on the one runner and I'm using my heel on the big pad brake and that's giving me extra stability and not making my legs so tired so so far this is like super fun it just seems super natural the sled flexes I can steer it with my the weight of my feet just like skiing really and it's just a quiet peaceful soft sort of humming sound that it makes it's really beautiful and just the scenery all around is absolutely epic I, I, I've been on this dog sled for 10 minutes now and I'm gonna say this is a must any outdoors person has got to got to give this a try As humans migrated across the Bering Strait and into North America, fully domesticated dogs accompanied them as far back as 15,000 years ago. It is well known that many northern native cultures had dogs as prominent aspects of daily life, and there is archaeological evidence of sled dogs and harnesses in the same locations dating back prior to European contact. The use of canines as draft and pack animals in North America was a widespread practice in most native cultures for thousands of years. 
In the far north, two main types of native dogs were the Inuit dog of coastal cultures and the interior village dogs of Athabascan Indians and other First Nation groups. These two canine groups make up the indigenous genetic base for today's modern Alaskan Husky. According to some historic accounts, Russian traders followed the Yukon River inland in the mid-1800s to acquire sled dogs from the interior regions of this waterway, as the dogs of this area were reputed to be stronger and better able to haul large, heavy loads than the native Russian sled dogs. The gold rush era of the late 1800s and early 1900s saw tens of thousands of adventurers and gold seekers flow into the north. While the rivers provided excellent transportation corridors for half the year, the extreme weather of the northern frontier demanded a more reliable and flexible means of transportation throughout the long winter months. This became the era of the sled dog in the north. Everything that moved during the frozen season moved by dog team. Prospectors, trappers, doctors, mail, commerce, trade, freighting of supplies. If it needed to move in winter, it was moved by sled dogs. As airplanes took over the mail routes in the 20s and 30s, the sled dogs role in this area of society was diminished. With the coming of highways and trucking transportation in the 40s and 50s, sled dogs lost their prominence in this area. The introduction of the snow machine in the 50s and 60s sounded the end of sled dogs dominating the trap lines of the north and began the decline of their general place within northern society. Sorry. Recreational mushing and the advent of sled dog Easy. racing became the primary focus of many mushers who wished to maintain their ties to these incredible animals and to a way of life that was disappearing from the far north. As the need for larger, stronger dogs changed to the desire for greater endurance and running efficiency, lighter breeds of dogs were introduced to the genetic lineage of sled dogs. Ironically, the Siberian Husky, a lighter, quicker breed from Russia, was a favored breed to introduce to the larger draft sled dog breeds of North America to increase their overall speed. This presents a direct contrast to the idea that Russian traders sought heavier draft type sled dogs from the interior regions of Alaska and the Yukon less than a century earlier to increase the hauling capacity of their lighter sled dogs. Alaskan Huskies are the most commonly used breed of sled dogs in the north today. This crossbreed between any of the pure northern canine breeds and other types of dogs is the result of many generations of genetically purposeful breeding that began in the late 1800s and continues to this day. These sled dogs can outrun almost anything on four legs over distances greater than 50 or 60 miles. They are well known for their very tough feet, strong hearts and insulating undercoats. They're incredibly strong-minded while still being dedicated to the humans who love and care for them. And they truly enjoy running in harnesses with their teammates and their mushers. Their sense of self-confidence and individual accomplishment comes from their ability to work in a manner similar to how their canine ancestors once worked and the excitement in their eyes and voices when they're harnessed for a run or a race clearly illustrates this deep-seated genetic drive to pull that defines modern sled dogs of the north. <laughs>